Good evening. If you are watching this, it is either because you purchased this online because I've made a way to make it available or because you're in my class tonight and we had problems with the technology and I emailed this to you. I love the way technology works. It makes things possible and it also makes some things impossible. So let's go with the possible. One of the things it does make impossible though, just to backtrack a little, is just being focused on where we are, who we are, and what we're actually doing. I was watching a video today about just that inability these days just to sit and do one thing. So that is one of the impetuses I had for this three-part class was just stopping and focusing and being with one little aspect of nature at a time. And this comes out of my very own desire. I feel like I've actually been a naturalist at the Albany Pine Bush for five years, and I feel like I get facts and figures and images in and out, in and out, in and out, and I never have taken the time just to stop and appreciate and delve deeply into one single aspect. So, I'm so excited about this series of classes. Tonight's class is focusing on trees and it's focusing on free writing about trees. And why am I so excited about free writing? It's because, well, the mind likes to play, not obey, as Nancy Klein says in one of her books. When we try to make our mind sit down and do something like with nature journaling, and okay, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna observe nature, and we are going to make a drawing. I don't know about you, but that just like my mind shuts down and says, I don't think so, I'm not obeying that. And so then I don't do it. When I just take out a notebook and I say, you know what, I'm just gonna play, it doesn't matter what I do. Oops, oh no, I lost my book. I'm just going to take this notebook and just chatter away. Whatever comes out at the end of my pen, it doesn't matter. So that is the free writing is a term that's, um, it's an old educational term also made popular by Natalie Goldberg, Natalie Goldberg, who wrote Writing Down the Bones in the 90s. And she was a Zen practitioner. And her Roshi said, you know, Natalie, writing can just be your practice. Instead of sitting and meditating, your thing is writing. So just sit there and write. So she wrote several, um, I think she has three or four books on this practice of writing like yoga practice or Zen practice, writing practice. And I just love that. I didn't have, I didn't pull up a quote from her, but I also wanted to share a quote from this book, If You Want to Write by Barbara Euland. Um, just an amazing book, so much in it. But her whole thing is just writing um, as a way of joy, a path of joy, and also as a way to um, find your true self, find truth. And um, this is kind of deep, but I'm going to read it. Gradually by writing, you will learn more and more to be free, to say all you think. And at the same time, you will learn never to lie to yourself, never to pretend and attitudinal lies. But only by writing and by long, patient, serious work will you find your true self. And then she put in footnote, I think she added this later, or by any other art. So it's just a matter of using creative power. But since this book is about writing, it was she's writing. Um, and she says, why find it? Because why find it your true self? Because it is, I think, your immortal soul and the life of the spirit. And if we can only free it and respect it and not run it down and let it move and work, it is the way to be happier and greater. So I, she has many great passages, but I love that. To be happier and greater and not greater in the sense of, boy, is my social media account look awesome but greater in the sense of presence and enjoying things and connecting with things. And it's so awesome that more and more these days people are realizing, wow, connecting with nature, it's a good idea. It's not just for granola crunchers. Um, and I started with trees because there does seem to be this also renaissance, I guess, I don't know, it seems brand new of things like the hidden life of trees and the call of the forest is a documentary. Um, so all those things, if you delve into them, talking about the, the presence of trees and the personality of trees and the livelihood of trees and the underground connections. And it's almost as if 
I'm realizing and people are realizing, wow, we've been surrounded by this community of trees that have been supporting us. And we just took it for granted, didn't even notice. And I don't say that as a blame thing because life is just layers of, of um, realizations. Uh, the other day I noticed on my dryer, there's a sticker, it says something like, made in America. I've had this dryer now for a year and a half and I never saw that sticker. And I was like, hmm, how about that? Here I am thinking I'm a conscious living human being and there's something I've literally been using at least weekly, twice weekly and never noticed that little sticker. Um, that also happened with a car I had. I realized about six months after I had it that there was a light in the roof on the uh, ceiling. I don't know how I missed that before. So I try to be patient with myself and with others. Sometimes there's something right in front of us and we just don't see it. Um, speaking of seeing in front of you and writing, Annie Dillard's book, if you haven't read this, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, the audio recording is really amazing. Um, I'm going to read this to you. It It's going to seem, it's really a mouthful and I'm using it because she has a way with words. I was listening to this on um, in my headphones and I just actually started to cry because just her, uh, she just lets herself get engulfed by the images and she, the words seem to come to her. I think she, you know, she's done that enough writing that it just comes out like um, it's poetry and it's deep and it's exotic. So here's a, just a little description of her being outside and it's um, in, you know, like March. So a little bit like it is now with the trees not quite budding. Shadows lope along the mountain's rumpled flanks. They elongate like roof tips, like lobes of spilling water, faster and faster. A warm purple pigment pools in each ruck and tuck of the rock. It deepens and spreads, boring crevices, canyons. As the purple vaults and slides, it tricks out the unleafed forest and rumpled rock in gilt in shape-shifting patches of glow. These gold lights veer and retract, shatter and glide in a series of dazzling splashes, shrinking, leaking, exploding. The ridges, bosses and hummocks sprout bulging from its side. The whole mountain looms miles closer. The light warms and reddens. The bare forest folds and pleats itself like living protoplasm before my eyes, like a running chart a wildly scrawling oscillograph on the present moment. The air cools. I am more alive than all the world. So I read that to you as inspiration of just, um, just that excitement for life and seeing things in a different way. I mean, she's talking about life that, she, I mean, sorry, light that veers and retracts, shatters and glides then splashes, shrinking, leaking, exploding. Um, I don't know about you, but again, seeing things that we haven't seen before, if while we're free riding or on Saturday when we're just out enjoying nature, forest bathing, I'm gonna have my notebook with me, but I'm not gonna be thinking I need to write or do anything, but it's nice to have it there as a resource. But if I can see the light shrinking, leaking and expanding, or as it warms and reddens, the bare forest folds and pleats, you know, it's just awesome to think of what we can do with words and what we can do with our perceptions. And again, so that's what the series of classes is about, is not creating a particular thing, but interacting and letting things impress on us and letting ourselves be informed by them. And the book that I dropped um, says a little bit about that. Um, this is uh, Keeping a Nature Journal by... Um, Claire Walker Leslie, I, for some reason, sorry, yeah, I always get her name kind of mixed up, and Charles Roth. And um, it's a lovely book. It's very extensive, Keeping a Nature Journal. Um, one of my friends, Jen, got to see this, uh, her in person, and she had lots of journals, she said, that were just kind of a mess. And here she shows different um, parts of uh, her notebooks. They're sort of the nicer parts, but Again, when we're thinking of doing our pages, it's not necessarily the finished work, which is nice for it to be aesthetically pleasing, but also that we're interacting with the world 
And um, Frederick Frank in the Zen of Seeing said, in this 20th century, so this is so last century, but in this 20th century, to stop rushing around, to sit quietly on the grass, to switch off the world and our phones and come back to the earth, to allow the eye to see a willow, a bush, a cloud, a leaf. I've learned what I have not drawn, I have never really seen. So when we get to the drawing part, remember that it's actually something that it's so that we can know the world better and interact better. So tonight and this um, little segment is all about free writing. And then I'll talk a little bit more about what's to come after. Now, because of the nature of this format, I actually did my free writing right before this. I wrote for 10 minutes, just set the timer and began writing about trees. So what I am suggesting right now is that you stop this video, pull out your notebook and pen, set a timer, and you can do 10 minutes or you could do five if you want. I would recommend at least 10 um, or longer if you want. And once your pen starts going, don't let it stop. Just let it keep going across the page. Even if you're not, you can't think of a thing, you write tree, 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 trunk, 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 leaf, leaf, leaf. Um, and then when th you just never know what's gonna come out. If you just keep writing, some thought will um, co um, coalesce and it will come out on the page. So it's that magic of the pen moving. I, um, so stop the tape or video, sorry, and do that. And then when we come back, I will share with you what I wrote. And I'm always tell people, don't make excuses. Don't equivocate. Don't put yourself down. But I will say, but that what I wrote, it seems very plain to me. It's very simple. I felt like I didn't go too deep. Um, I just went from one thing to another. I tried to keep it light and just, um, I wrote a little bit about trees that I grew up with, memories of, that I had in the trees. I even mentioned a childhood book that I loved and um, tried to investigate why was it that I liked it. And then, um, and then a little reflection on like, again, how come I didn't see this before? How magnificent trees are. So I will see you in 10 minutes. Did you stop the tape? Okay, <laughs> you're back. Okay, great. All right, ready? I'm going to read my piece. So this is my April 15th, 2021, free writing on trees. So it's always good to write that down even, um, I, I use a loose leaf notebook so that I can, if I want to, I can get rid of the pages later. I don't like to keep a lot of things. I'm sort of a minimalist or I'm a minimalist. Um, but this keeps it organized and then also easily recyclable if necessary. And I have to say, I'm sorry, but this is not recycled paper right now, but I'm going to start buying um, recycled or um, there's some great notebooks or paper now that's not even made from trees. It's made from sugar cane bagasse or uh, hemp. So, you know, helping save our forests, but we have to go with where we are and what we have. All right, so free writing on trees for um, 10 minutes. I am so thrilled for this opportunity to si simply stop and contemplate my life around, about, by, near, informed by trees. Why has it never occurred to me to do this before? Um, favorite trees of my youth, the willow at Redford Court, the pines at my neighbor's house. I think it was Teresa's house. We made little little um, berms, little houses made of pine needles. And I used a shell as a character. The black spots on the curve of its back were its eyes. The tree house in Taiwan. Well, I'm joking because there was no tree in our yard. So the tree house was just on stilts. I don't think that was very safe. The um, oh, the palms in front of our house at 96 Aleu Place, uh, Kihei, Maui. And the plumeria tree that was also in front of the same house. It smelled so good. Oh, and when we moved there, all of those fruit trees. Oh my gosh, there was grapefruit and tangelo, um, banana, papaya, orange. 
Wow, now that I think of it, over the years, they all just died away. Hmm. We also had beast-till trees, oleander, and angel trumpet. <laughs> I found out later that these were all extremely poisonous. Yeah, not very safe for children, but I guess that's the way it was back then. And I remember one book, it's called The Pirate Oak, and which captivated me with its description of this huge sprawling oak tree, or at least that's how I remember it. It was so mysterious to me having grown up or lived in the tropics so much. The thing I find myself wishing now was that I'd appreciated all these trees in my life more. Just think of all of our oxygen, it comes from trees. At least I believe almost all of it does. So much good food and shade and beauty and presence. The space um, in front of my window is occupied by a forest. Part of it is wetlands so I can see deep into the tract. And sometimes I feel so lucky, so fortunate to simply be able to look at the trunks and the branches, the waving limbs and needles and leaves. It is like an open air ocean, so much life swimming through it. And I am a lucky deep sea diver. Oh, trees, keep growing, keep growing. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> I am. So that was my little free write on trees. I hope you enjoyed it and see it's just a simple kind of opening up of the mind and putting things down on paper. Later, I'll think back to this and remember, oh yeah, remember all those fruit trees at that house we moved into when I was 10. Oh my gosh, I, I remember being fascinated and what a treasure. And that might lead to, I don't know, maybe growing some more um, fruit and food trees. Um, but it's just a connection to my past that really helps me feel more grounded inside. And so that's the essence to me of free writing. One, it does, it just gets some things out on the page. Um, it, it's highly possible that I could have gone into something that was deeply emotional. I know probably because I was anticipating reading it to the group that I didn't, but say I had gone into um, something that was difficult or painful or just wanted to get off my chest. And that's totally great. That's what free writing is about. And also, again, that's why I write in a loose leaf and also only on one side of the page because there are things that come out on the page and that's the purpose of that moment. And it's great to take it and tear it up and recycle it or burn it or put it in a blender and pour it down the drain. Um, part of free writing is letting things come out and letting them go. Just like trees every year, they lose their leaves. They don't hold on to them. They let it go. So free writing is great for connecting, for realizing, for embracing, and for letting go. So that was tonight's session. And on Saturday, we will have YouTube Live from the forest. I'm actually gonna use the forest right behind my house. And I'm going to take a notebook and we'll just go for a walk. I'm gonna narrate a little bit as we look around and just observe and appreciate and wonder and maybe have some questions. And I'll take a little time, put the uh, video down so I'll be there, but I'm just gonna sit quietly like forest bathing and you can join me essentially just being quiet and soaking up all the good energy. And then we'll come back and trundle back out of the forest and, and I'll look forward to our third session, which will be making a page. So I haven't made a page yet for trees, but I did one a while ago for chipmunks and this took me a long time. I'd like to be faster. And that's another reason for doing this class. And I'm gonna hold this up. I don't want anybody to judge in some ways. It's, there's things that I would change if I did it again. Um, but it did come out looking kind of cute. So a simple page. And also I might go for a smaller, I do like to actually put things in binders eventually. Um, so I might go for something smaller. This is my chipmunk page. And what I did was just look up some facts. And then I put a little picture of my bird feeder because the chipmunks are always on there eating. And then um, I, I like to make frames. So I used a smaller piece of paper and drew the square. And then that just became trees. And then use a little paintbrush and made trees. And this is with, um, I used... Um, 
chalk pastels, which are so easy. It's great. You just brush the past or scribble with the pastel a little bit and then use a tissue and it just creates a nice little patina. And then I wrote, this is a little basically free write. It was like my take. I rarely saw chipmunks until I was in my 30s and we moved to New York and then I saw them everywhere. They are so small, but in the woods, they can make a lot of noise. And I love this. So I just love the uh, Latin name, Tamius striatus. And to tell you the truth, I chickened out. I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to draw a good chipmunk. So I used it. I think it was an Albany pine bush um, uh, calendar of events. And I cut the little chipmunk out. So see, it works. Very simple, just a box and then a couple little branches. And um, yeah, so it was very fun. And the, if you want, it was squirrel family, scuridae, orders, rodentia, genus, tamias. Essentially, they are pygmy squirrels. And they're usually 5.5 .5 to 7.5 inches long. That's the body. And 3.1 to 4.3 inches long, the tail. They love seeds, berries, tender plants, and they will eat fungi, insects, other arthropods, and sometimes even carrion. And at my bird feeder, that's where I had the little arrow. I love drawing arrows somehow, it seems very scientific. So, oh, and they have three to eight young born in spring or summer. So we'll do something like this around trees in a week from today. And, um, so I'm telling you this too, because it's kind of fun to look up. I think I used a, I just, for that one, I just looked online, but it is kind of nice if you have access to the library and get some books and read about a particular tree. Um, and again, for this, we're not going to try to overdo it. Just a general, you know, stats about trees. If you want to delve into a particular tree, that's totally fine. Um, I'm thinking more that this would be a general tree thing. And then in future classes that we'd go into particulars like oaks or maples or sycamores or how exciting, right? Um, birches and beaches, doing one at a time and, and then having a page for each will be so connected to them. And then go in the forest and you'd recognize them and they'll be like old friends. So friends, I have enjoyed this time so much. I hope you have. I hope you're excited to do free writing, excited to get out in the forest, and excited to create a page that will help you cherish one tiny sliver of nature even more deeply than you do now. Okay, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and if you need to, it has gotten cold here again, so stay warm.